Hi, my name is Emily, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you all to my baclofen pump. Her name's Little Debbie after the snack cake company. I have a type of motor neuron disease that causes upper and lower body spasticity. Spasticity is basically increased tone in the muscles, which causes jerky movements like this. Isn't that great? The baclofen pump is one way I manage lower body spasticity. I started taking oral muscle relaxers in 2012. By spring 2019, I had maxed out on all of the uh, oral muscle relaxers I could use. So my options for managing lower body spasticity was either a wheelchair or the baclofen pump. And my doctors recommended the baclofen pump. So after a consultation with the neurosurgeon, in a successful trial where we tested the medication to see if it would work, I was booked for surgery and I had a baclofen pump implanted in July 2019. My baclofen pump is made by the company Medtronic and it is a medical infusion pump that takes liquid baclofen from a reservoir in the abdomen to the intrathecal space of the spinal column via a catheter. All of the pump components are implanted under the skin to decrease the risks of infection. The pumps are FDA approved for spasticity and pain management. The Medtronic pumps come in two different sizes, 20 milliliters and 50 milliliters. The 20 milliliter pump is three quarters of an inch thick and the 50 milliliter pump is one inch thick. Both sizes are three inches in diameter and are a somewhat spherical teardrop shape. I actually have a picture of the pump in an x-ray and when you look at the x-ray it looks very much like the Millennial Falcon from Star Wars. So how fun. One thing I want to discuss in this video is the refill process. The pumps are refilled and programmed by qualified medical professionals. A remote and tablet are used to communicate and program the device. The wand is placed over the pump and it communicates with the tablet so that way the doctors can adjust your dosage and do all the work that they need to do. My pump gets refilled every three to six months, depending on the concentration of the drug and my current flow rate. So now we're going to talk through the process of getting refilled. Once Debbie has been disinfected, they use a template to find the refill port. They use a needle, so needle warning. I tried to make it as untriggering as possible. They use a needle to find the refill port. They then remove the excess baclofen. Once that's been done, they clamp it off and they then use a syringe to insert the new baclofen. You'll notice a blue disc connected to the syringe and that's a filter to make sure that nothing gets into the pump that's not supposed to. Once that's done, they clamp it off and the needle gets removed. Let's talk about the benefits of baclofen pump therapy. One of the main benefits is that it requires a lower dose of baclofen because it goes straight to the spinal column. The oral baclofen it takes a higher dose because it's less efficient at permeating the blood-brain barrier. Another benefit is that it can be programmed to customized flex schedules. For example, I have a higher flow rate in the morning than I do in the evening because that's when I'm the most spastic. Additionally, there's continuous medication flow, so you're always going to be at the optimal level of relaxation. Another great thing is that it is reversible because some surgical interventions are not, but with the baclofen pump, you can titrate down back to a lower level and then the pump can be removed. Now that we've talked about the benefits, I'll show you guys some before and after videos of before I get my pump increased and then after. Because since my spasticity is progressive, I have to continually get my pump increased as the spasticity increases. 
So the before video will be me when I'm walking with a more spastic gait, and the after video will be of after the increase has settled in. Typically it takes three to five days for me to be able to get the full effect of a pump increase. Here is my gait when I am at my most spastic. It's a little bit more rigid than your typical person. And from my experience, it feels like I have two fully inflated blood pressure cuffs around my calves and ankles. I'm very lucky to have doctors who help keep my spasticity at a great level. And so in this next clip, we will see what my walking looks like after an increase of 6%. So you can see it's a little bit looser, I'm moving a little faster. For me, my legs feel much more comfortable and I'm able to go longer distances, which I really appreciate. Now, the baclofen pump therapy and surgery is a high risk procedure. There are a few types of risks that can occur, ranging from mechanical, to infectious and surgical. One of the most common uh, complications is a cerebral spinal fluid leak. This is because you have a catheter, basically a tube going into your spinal column and, and spinal fluid is able to occasionally get out around the tube leading to pressure headaches. Another complication is infection since you had these open surgical sites. And then you can also get mechanical problems such as the pump shutting off or having some sort of battery malfunction. Another common complication is the catheters breaking or getting clogged, twisted. Another thing that I didn't know until after my surgery is that if your surgeon doesn't stitch your pump down to the fascia of your abdomen, the pump can twist around or get, move around and get underneath your ribs or your hips and it can be very uncomfortable for people. My pump was stitched down and it is so stuck down that when you push on it, it doesn't move at all, which is great because I'm a very active person. And let me just tell you, worst part about the whole aftercare because every since the pump was stitched down in four places to my abdomen, when I would laugh, my stomach would contract. It was horrible, but let me just say, totally worth it because now I can just live my life, do what I want to do, and I don't have to worry about it. Other complications, skin breakdown around the pump, withdrawal or overdose, because if the pump malfunctions and there's some, for some reason, a lack of baclofen flowing or the baclofen comes out of the pump, you can get an overdose or withdrawal from that situation. Not great. The other thing, constipation, seizures, you know, not the best. One complication that's not talked about a lot, but there's a interesting some interesting research and papers about is the progression of scoliosis after the pump is implanted. There are also drug related side effects from baclofen itself. These can range from loose muscles to nausea, vomiting, sleepiness, drowsiness, headache, upset stomach. Not great, but that comes with the oral muscle relaxers as well. I listed off most of the complications that come with the baclofen pump, which can be a bit daunting because, you know, not the best, but overall I have benefited from the pump. At first I had a horrible experience due to complications and side effects. However, once that was sorted out, I was able to get back on the rehab path. After a month and a half of physical therapy, I was able to move back into my apartment at school, live independently, and just get back to my life as it was before, but better because I was less spastic in my legs. By March 2020, I was able to do an 18-inch box jump, which I found to be incredible because I'd gone from being wheelchair dependent in August 
to working out and doing what I wanted to do. And it was all thanks to the rehab protocol that I talked about in my other videos, which includes exercise, electrical stimulation, and exercise supplements. One thing I want to note before ending this video is that because of my upper body spasticity, I have not been able to decrease my oral muscle relaxers. We tried it first, gave it the good old college try, but unfortunately, once I decreased my oral muscle relaxers, I started developing spasticity related pain in my upper body. In conclusion, I am very thankful for the pump. It has allowed me to be as physically active and comfortable walking as possible. And I look forward to the journey ahead. I know it's not always going to be a smooth one, but you know, nothing in life goes perfectly all the time. It's a wash most of the time, but thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about my experience with the pump that weren't answered in this video. If you or someone you know is contemplating getting the pump, definitely reach out to medical professionals and doctors to see if this is the right fit for you. So yes, thank you for all for watching. Subscribe if you want to. And hope you all have a good one. Bye.